Here we are live on the track. Coach has already been doing it for eight minutes. He's trying to break his record of eight and a half minutes on the jump rope. Finishing strong. We got a new opening shot this time. What's the time, Tom? You're almost there, Coach. Eight minutes, 20 seconds. Nice. That was good. We have uh, here <laughs> double sided Samir A double Z. Mr. Tom Mad translator. The promoter. What, what shirt are you wearing? You're wearing uh, I'm wearing Summit, the Summit uh, Abel Sanchez. You have to turn around. You have and to turn around. I'm representing. It's in the back. Oh, El Flaco. There you go. El Flaco uh, Bochuk. He's fighting tonight at the Hollywood Fight Nights, right, Samir? Yep, don't miss you'll, it. You'll be translating for him? I will be translating like a crazy guy. That crazy guy? <laughs> like a crazy guy. Like, you know how they say, like, uh, an anger translator? I'm going to be that. You're, you're, the anger, you're the mad translator. And we yep. have special guests today, all the way from Brooklyn, New York. Yes, Brian Ceballo. Brian uh, had his fight at Madison Square Garden. The last uh, was your last fight. Yes, sir. Pretty much stole the show for the undercard and uh, had a great knockout win. Uh, oh, uh, actually, a great win over. Uh, uh, you're both. That was you're both. Four. Yeah. It was yeah, 14 was, and 0, uh, 12 nice. KOs at the time. Nice. Yeah, that was a great, uh, it was an eight round decision, right? Eight round decision, yeah. correct. And okay. that, guy, that guy kept coming. It was like a bull and a matador. <laughs> he didn't stop. He didn't stop. He, he wanted to, you know, to win. He came to win. Um, he came to, to take the throne. So. Brian, one of the uh, brightest lights, uh, one of the fastest rising uh, uh, prospects in, in boxing and a uh, great amateur career. All right, how many? Uh, National titles did you have? Uh, 16 or 17 national titles. Oh. So it was a lot. And over, then you had over the Golden, New York Golden Gloves? Yes, five times. Five so Brian times. told me that he traveled all the way to Karaganda, Kazakhstan during his amateur. Oh, that's right, in the World How's Series that, of man? Boxing, right? Yeah, I did. Um, Karaganda was, was great. It was cold, negative 17 degrees while I was there. But Triple G's down, Triple G's city. No, but it was good. The people were nice. Um, Everyone treated treated me with hospitality, so that right. was a good part. No, and I got I got one of those hats. Oh yeah, for the, cold the one that I just brought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the the mink hat. The mink oh hat. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. <laughs> but, and coach, you know how important this is. Brian also sold a lot of tickets in, in New York, so not only do you have to fight in the ring, you have to be marketable outside the ring. So but I his... thought, what a breakthrough fight for Brian, because uh, I think when you got knocked down in Hollywood. Was the best thing that could have happened to you? I mean, you were sort of relaxed in there, and, you know, and you, it was a real knockdown. And uh, that, this is your first fight after that knockdown, right? This is the second. Second. Fight. Yeah. But your whole your whole mentality was different this time. I mean, you were so good this fight. You were real. It was like a pro fighter versus an amateur fighter. Thank you. Uh, and and, and well, this guy you fought was really good. You really took good. Over. He was knocking everyone out. <laughs> you took over. Was he? he was 14 and 0 with 12 knockouts, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was good, but after about four rounds, I mean, he dominated totally. Thank so you. you were coming out strong. So Brian's got a huge future. And he has uh, how many fights do you have now with Colin Morgan? Uh, this was the fourth fight. Sixth fight. Oh, sixth fight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he made a he made a switch. Uh, yeah. As trainers, and you really see the difference in training with Colin difference. Morgan, training at Gleason's gym, right? No, we tra we actually train at uh, it's a it's a local gym in the in the city in, Bro um, in Brooklyn or in the, in Manhattan in Manhattan in Manhattan uh, okay. yeah so we, we travel to Manhattan uh, it's called Bout Fight okay. it's great you know it's private we got a private setting and we went to your uh, private gym with Triple G when he was fighting in New York in yeah. Madison Square Garden yes, yeah that was a New York Athletic Club right New York Athletic yeah and right. then uh, Brian's management is uh, David McWater and Tim Van Newhouse Tim Van Newhouse, Tim yeah. Van Newhouse. Yeah. Yeah. They really got their ass together. Uh, if you want to hear, there's an interview with uh, David McWater on Kurt Imhoff's uh, podcast, yeah. uh, the uh, Boxing Esquire, I think it is. And uh, it's an unbelievable interview. You got to listen to David McWater. What a story he's got, how he got into boxing. And uh, he's a real businessman. He was uh, in his community, he was helping out. I think he was on the, some kind of uh, boards. For the city, trying to improve the city, but the kids, they, how old is he? Um, I don't know ex 
exactly his age, but like in the forties, maybe forties. No, I would say like early fifties, maybe. Yeah, but he's really sharp yeah. guy. He's your age, coach. Early fifties. Yeah. Coach, actually, yeah. My my follower is asking, how old are you? <laughs> how old? They looked at you the jumping, thing. doing Tell the jump rope. Here's a better question, Samir. What was the first fight you ever went to? In was, I was ten years old. My dad <laughs> took me. I can remember like it was yesterday. Went to the Olympic Auditorium. It was incredible and you know i have friends my age the same experience yeah boxing was a huge deal you know all the dads a big event to go to right at that time olympic auditorium yeah. it was that was place. pretty cool that was your first fight ever i was 10 yeah. wait so who was fighting though yeah, who, who, was, uh, who was fighting at the olympic you don't remember, you don't remember? You remember the atmosphere, right? Actually, walking in, it was all smoky. Who I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember walking in, and then you, you go in, and, you, and then you go down an aisle, and all of a sudden, it's like this, and here's the aisle down to the fight, and you look at this ring, and the people, and the lights, and the smoke. Everyone smoked. They allowed uh, cigar smoking back yeah, then, right? They did. In, indoors. And then uh, it was the place to go. Everyone went every Thursday night, Olympic Auditorium, and... Uh, it was great so but then boxing was like a, a family affair for a lot of people everyone I knew every Wednesday night and Friday night they had the fights on and the families watched the fights the great thing about the Avalon and the Hollywood fight nights it's family friendly the kids uh, Mario Lopez brought brought, uh, brought his son with them actually went in the ring with his son and uh, you know, so you want to expose the younger generation to boxing especially live up uh, up close to the well, ring it's bring uh, your baby yeah, it's i a, tell you a huge thing for boxing and for the future and for people getting interested is uh, espn having fights now and uh that's all top todd uh todd todd, todd buff mm -hmm. put that whole thing together yeah. I mean, he's really he's have you worked with todd sure I work with todd a lot a number he, of he's really too. sharp guy he's really sharp he's great for boxing all right, to answer my question, though, I'll tell her that you're 95 years old. 93. 93. Alena, he's 93 years And we, we have to acknowledge, so uh, the anchor of the show, yeah. the editor-in-chief, Doug Fisher, he, he's not here. He's a little bit under the weather. He's resting for, he did the Thompson Boxing Show on Friday night, right? That was a good show. You watched uh, some of that stream. I did. And then uh, he's going to do our show tonight at the Hollywood Fight Nights at the Avalon. So Doug's uh, resting up getting ready for his uh, commentating with Kevin Kelly. Cynthia Conte is going to be there tonight. The doors open at 3 o'clock. You're wearing uh, Sergei Bowachuk's yes. shirt. You'll be translating for uh, for uh, Sergei tonight. Uh, it'll, it'll be a great stream. And Facebook page and 360 Promotions YouTube. And also for tickets, you can, at this point, you pretty much have to get them at the door because we're sold out uh, online. I'm pretty sure the tickets... Uh, this will be the highest uh, capacity we've ever had. We've got nine fights on the show. A lot of guys sold tickets. Marco Deckman sold a lot of tickets. Yeah, Enriquez and... Uh, what's that? Uh, isn't it on SB Nation too? Uh, on uh, Box, Box Nation. Nation. Box Nation. It's on Box Nation yeah. in, uh, in the UK. And that guy from yeah. San Diego sold a lot of Mario tickets. Mario Ramos sold a lot of tickets. Uh, uh, Philly Rubacaba is back on the show. Adrian Corona is on the show. Um, so yeah, it, a lot of people be, come too. Yeah. But Mar uh, Mark, Marco Deckman, yeah. trained by Freddie Roach, will be yeah. two Hall of Fame trainers there tonight. Abel Sanchez, Freddie Roach, uh, Ryan Sabayo will be a special guest there, one of the uh, fastest rising boxers in the sport. <laughs> and uh, it'll be it'll be fun, a little bit of, for everyone. Could I ask uh, Brian a few you questions? You want to interview him? Okay. I'd like to ask him a few questions. All right. So what's the first fight you ever saw? You mean live? Probably. Or on TV? Yeah, live, live. 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 I don't know, live probably. When's the first fight you saw on TV? Uh, on TV, I think it was De La Hoya versus Trinidad. Really? Yeah. Were you there? For, yeah, I, I was, was there. there. I was, I was, I was there, there for, for New York. And I, remember, I, I mean, in Las Vegas. Yeah, I was there in Las Vegas. I remember, so I'm Puerto Rican, um, but as, as a young kid, you don't really think about this. But I remember I was so upset with Trinidad because. Uh, he, I remember he punched um, De La Hoya, and then he pushed him down, and they counted it as a knockdown. I said, "Why? Why would you do something so dirty like that?" Um, <laughs> and ever since then, I had like this thing with him. But then, as I got older, I said, oh, yeah. "It was just boxing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I think Trinidad was fortunate to win that decision, but it yeah. was Oscar's fault. 
He blew it, but it was Oscar Cruz, the last of four rounds. I think that was the yeah. fight that uh, Gil Clancy was in his corner, right? Yeah. I can't remember. I, I, think, uh, yes. I think so, yeah. So when did you first uh, get interested in being a boxer? So my father actually put me in, in the sport at the age of seven because I was too old for baseball. Um, usually, you know, they start they start young, like three, four years old for baseball. And he said, you know what? Still going to sport. He liked watching ba um, boxing too. So ever since then, you know, I was training, and they told me you'll fight at the age of ten. I said okay, and I was training for something. And it was it. from there. I was traveling all over the country at eleven years old, missing school. <laughs> so I was having, I was having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. How did you and balance, I was winning. How did you balance that with the amateur program, traveling, and then uh, trying to you know keep your studies? So. No, the teachers, they were very accommodating. They would just give me the work, like, uh, the weeks. Oh, worth okay, of work. so you could study on the and road. Then, and yeah, then. exactly. Okay. I would do the work on the plane or something, so I could cram everything up, and then I have the rest of the week to myself. Coach, you would agree. Brian's one of the best-spoken boxers, most uh, one of the most marketable boxers, yeah. so he balances his action in the ring with his marketability. And then he picked uh, out the right uh, Just wait till those endorsements team. come in. He picked out the right <laughs> promoter. <laughs> So how did you pick film? It, you know, it took time. Um, as I've said before, I built a relationship with uh, with Dave for over two years um, before actually going with Split T. Yeah. And and then I was speaking with Tim for for a couple of months even before signing with them. And you know, it was just I think it was the right opportunity with them. Yeah. You know, they they showed everything that the sport really had to offer yeah and, and they're they were, young they were, and, they were good people they're too. young and fresh too yeah and they were good people mo most importantly you know yeah, people good. people don't look at that people just look at the company yeah. you have to look at the people behind the company right um and tim's relationship with tom he he was working on that behind the scenes and yeah. i searched tom i researched tom and you know he seemed like a great guy and i met him and it was exactly what, what was online. There was, there was no, no fakeness to it. So, did, did it you know at that crazy. time he could beat the eight minute a mile? I didn't know at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Dave, and you, you, you can appreciate this having watched boxing for a long time. A lot of times, guys look great in the gym, great sparring sessions. They'll look good in smaller fights, but as soon as you put them in the big stage. It doesn't get bigger than a Triple G show at Madison Square Garden. And Brian was in the at the garden in his hometown. And then you see a lot of times also in their hometown, they have the pressure. They're selling tickets. Yeah. You know, they have a lot of their friends and family coming. And that's even more pressure. But uh, Brian really shined. And it's tough, by far his toughest fight, a huge step of fight. One that Dave McWater actually was uh, very <laughs> concerned about that it would be yeah, too much of a step because Zuboff uh, was very dangerous opponent. A lot of knockouts, big puncher. And, uh, and Brian and his coach uh, Colin really uh, insisted on uh, taking the tough fight because he knew to get on the. We told him to get on the Triple G show. You have to fight, you know, a tough guy, especially get on the zone telecast. And you know, he was selling tickets, and you know, he came out uh, with his best performance of his career yeah. by far. And, and by so, far, so yeah. this Dave, I think his most concern was because a lot of people see me as this nice guy. People that know me behind. Um, behind the scenes in boxing they see me as oh this nice guy he doesn't really you know have that grittiness and everything but it, it's a whole different sport you don't yeah. have to be mean outside in order to, to right. perform in there I mean the perfect example is Triple G he's the nicest yeah. guy I've, I had spent a little bit of time with him in New York and the way he performs in the ring is totally different from what he is outside. Yeah. So. And the great thing about Triple G is his sportsmanship. You know, not only is he knocking guys out in the ring, but his sportsmanship outside the ring, the respect yeah. that he has for the sport, for his opponents, for the opponent's teams. So it, uh, it makes a big difference, like you said. You know, even if yeah. you're in there, you know, trying to win, but doing it the right way and then have respect for the opponent after. And then also. Sure. And before. Before. You don't see him ever pushing pushing the fighters on the on the yeah. stage or but also Wayne with or his self-respect self-respect absolutely yeah. which brian has too it's a huge yeah. thing for everyone to not just yeah. boxing for everyone and we need to change that in the in the entirety of the sport but last night's fight uh you, you watched last night's fight right 
Hey, we're gonna talk I, about I, yeah. Um, we're gonna talk about the fights yeah. from from last night, then tonight, yeah. and then uh, the upcoming fights. Yeah. So, um, do you ever like gain a little weight between fights, or do you stay? I do. Um, no, I'm, I pretty much stay in shape, but yeah. I usually walk around between like 159 and 162. Uh -huh. And I never really go above that. And when I'm in fighting shape, I usually yeah. walk around like 157, 158. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just have to lose the, those 10 pounds, which... So, you know, you're like like ballooning between fights is just a disaster. But, I mean, like, look at Bernard Hopkins. Oh, there's the guy. Yeah. You know, so... And uh, about discipline and eating and sleeping and thinking and... I have a story about Bernard Hopkins. I know you you have always said how disciplined he is and how he stays in shape. We were at an IBF convention in Can uh, I think it was in Acapulco, Mexico, and it was a Sunday morning. I always get up early. It might have been Saturday morning, but uh, I'm up like I don't know. It was like six or seven o'clock in the morning. I look out my balcony and there is Bernard running on the beach. You know, and he, he wasn't training for a fight. He was just uh, staying in shape and and uh, always uh, disciplined. And uh, actually, he might have been training for a fight, but. Uh, very disciplined. Uh, yeah. you know, Bernard so, Hopkins. do you have a all-time favorite fighter? Yes. Um, as cliche as it is, Mayweather. I like the way he thinks in the ring. Um, he's super smart yeah. in the ring, and also even like the way he approached his his boxing career too. You know, I don't I don't know him as a person, so I yeah. can't say anything about that. But yeah. him as a fighter, yeah, yes, absolutely. One of the highest ring IQs and one of the best matchmakers in, in boxing. Yeah, great matchmaker. yeah. I saw him fight live when he was really fighting. You know, when he was uh, in there. We well, saw him fight. Uh, did you find saw him? See him we saw uh, Gennaro Hernandez. I saw, I, found, I saw him fight Corrales. And Corrales, Corrales. right? I remember yeah. the Corrales fight. So he was yeah. he's a different fighter, but uh, he's good. Yeah. But he's your favorite fighter. Not a, not a Puerto Rican. <laughs> Um, no, Trinidad I like too. Yeah. Uh, after, you know, after I got a little older, and got, <laughs> and got past that. I um, mean, boxing in Puerto Rico is like religion. Sure. Yeah. And um, and Cotto too. Cotto was a great. Cotto was great. Whenever you have that national rivalry between Puerto Rico and Mexico, that's always yeah. that was it's, the thing with uh, Trinidad and Chavez or. Uh, so, I mean, that, I Hoy, yeah. so yeah. do you do you feel like uh, for your last fight because I saw this huge improvement. You know, a whole change in in your rhythm in that fight. Did, did you feel a change going in? Did you did you think differently? Because you were more you're just more aggressive. You know, you're just strong. You were much stronger. I thought. Um, I think you know a lot of people that are just starting to get to know me as a pro boxer. They don't really know my history. I've performed well in like in a lot of amateur fights you know and for me that's the way that i'm supposed to perform all the time yeah so for me it wasn't a huge surprise but i was just super focused for that fight because i said this you know this is the time yeah. um everyone is here it's on the big platform and this guy he's coming to take my head off and if i'm not focused yeah. and i'm not in shape then I didn't have time to think in there. He was just reacting. The guy kept coming forward, and he was uh, fighting him off. I'm wearing, in tribute to Madison Square Garden, where uh, Brian just fought and where Triple G just fought, wearing their uh, MSG boxing uh, uh, shirt. You know, Sal Federico, shout out to him, and yes, Joel Fisher yes. in the garden. Uh, great guys to work with at, uh, at the Mecca of boxing. So, so do you like uh, Los Angeles? I like Los Angeles. I, more than anything, I love the weather. Um, <laughs> It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's not. It's like Tom was saying here in Santa Monica. It's actually a lot better than it is in LA, uh, yeah. specifically for the weather. It just gets a lot hotter over there. You get the ocean breeze here. Yeah, so it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. And, and when did you move to? Uh, how old were you when you moved to New York? I was about to turn three. It was the beginning of February. Tell, tell, uh, tell Dave your story. Do I, don't you have a Dominican uh, heritage as well? Yeah, I have. So my parents, they're from the DR. My entire family is actually from the DR. Yeah. Um, but I was born in Puerto Rico. My parents, they they migrated from from DR to, to Puerto Rico, and they lived there. Um, yeah. And I was born there. My father, my parents, they were doing like a restaurant business over there, and I was born there. So for me, 
Yeah, that's my bud too. Yeah. So. <laughs> do you speak Spanish? I do. It's my first language. Oh, yeah. oh cool. Yeah, that, that's good. That's also for the marketability. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, no, that's great. Oh, well, you got a big career ahead of you. Thank you. But I, I just saw. I was a little concerned when I, you know, as you were progressing. I didn't feel that you were progressing the way that I should be. Yeah. The way, and then the last fight was just you were incredible. And I was a lot of that's mental. Everything. But I, uh, did you prepare differently? No, we train. We train hard. Um, and again, like I said, we were focused. And I think for me, I was saying this before, when you put me under the bright lights and there are yeah. a lot of people yeah. that are watching, I'm not a person that's arrogant or likes to show off. But when it comes to that, I like showing off. My yeah, talent, that's, you know? that's, that's good. Yeah. So Sam Garcia is perfect. asking, when is your next fight? My next fight uh, it should be maybe you know end of September, beginning of October. We we're still in discussions of that. So cool. Sam, Sam Garcia, Garcia is yeah. the guy that discovered uh, Triple G up at, at the oh, gym. Okay. He's the first well, guy. He that was at Abel Sparring. Yeah. yeah. He was at yeah. Abel's Sparring. He called up Dean Fambleton and said. I just saw this guy, my God, I can't remember his name, but <laughs> this guy, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, so that's Sam, cool. Sam, you discovered him. And that's when Doug Fisher was up there watching oh, uh, Triple G sparring with Canelo. With some of the historic uh, sparring sessions yeah. up there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we can talk about, Dave, you want to talk about some of the fights last night? So, uh, yeah. so uh, Javante Tank Davis had a tremendous performance. Another... Uh, I mean, it was a big, uh, big favorite, but he had a great. And they uh, had fifteen thousand people in Baltimore. Sold a lot of tickets in, uh, yeah. in Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, Ramirez won another world title. He he stole the show. Uh, oh, Ramirez. Ramirez uh, they over, were both uh, really over, good. Uh, Maurice Hooker. But it was a great fight. Thing. Tremendous it was, fight, but uh, it was an easy Ramirez. fight to bet on. JP. JP had Ramirez. There was no way Ramirez going to lose. It's top rank. Gave up everything. They went to the zone from ESPN. They gave up, uh, when they went to the guy's hometown. They gave everything away. They knew positively they're gonna win that fight. And it was an incredible fight. It was a great oh, fight, yeah. Yeah, it was a great fight. Very good fight. That was, that was really good. So they're both, uh, actually, uh, the other guy that lost, he lost his focus. You know, when he got hit with that one. Maurice one Hooker, punch, yeah. Hooker, Hooker yeah. sort of relaxed just at the, yeah, that's that's what we were talking about walking here. You know, um, Maurice Hooker, he was just too relaxed. He didn't like, he didn't have anything to keep Ramirez off of him. Ramirez just kept coming, yeah. yeah. And then as soon as he had him hurt, and he oh, just threw wow. like six punches in a row, and he then rest up. Didn't that remind you of a yeah. UFC ending sort yeah, of? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was the same kind of thing yeah, yeah. where it was just like, where they get the guy on the ground, he's going to try But the but it speed was, of those uh, punches was uh, impressive. And uh, trained by uh, Robert Garcia. Yeah, but you yeah. know that uh, great game plan. Ramirez is, was trained by Freddie Roach. Originally, up, yeah. up to a couple fights ago. Right. Yeah. And the reason he left Freddie Roach is Freddie has so many fighters going on. He just didn't feel it was getting the attention. Freddie has a fighter tonight, Marco Deckman, on the Hollywood Fight Nights. Marco's <laughs> going to be in a great fight with Pete Keith Berry. Uh, Mario Ramos is in a great fight, and and sorry, Bolichuk is his first ten round fight. It's a big, it's a step up fight. He's fighting Fernando Marin. Who uh, Francisco uh, Salazar wrote a nice uh, article about that in uh, on Speaking the ring. Speaking of Barry, is Halle Berry coming tonight? Uh, she's been invited. She was at our show when uh, Cecilia Brekus fought uh, uh, at the Sub Hub Center. Oh, yeah. uh, she was there. I remember that? And, yeah. uh, so she's been invited. I don't know if she, you know, depending on her schedule, I don't think she's going to make it tonight. But um, you know, she's you know, always she works uh, out. She's always invited. Yeah, she trains boxing. Yeah. yeah. Peter Lee Thomas uh, trains her, and uh, yeah, definitely uh, uh, great people. Absolutely. Yeah. So your fights are on in England tonight also? They're on Box Nation, yeah. Box Nation starts at, uh, the stream starts at uh, 4 p.m. The first fight's actually at 3.30. Doors open at 3 o'clock. Um, but like I said, we're going to have the most people of any of our, we've been sold out, I think the last three shows we've sold out. But uh, this will be by far the biggest tech capacity because we've got so many ticket sellers. Like I said, Marco Deckman, he sold a lot of tickets. He's going to have a big female uh, fan base there. And uh, Mario Ramos and uh, and sorry, sorry Bochuk is uh, people are really he was uh, what was he Dave he was like uh, one of the fighters to watch for uh, Ring magazine. Yeah, the prospect, feature prospect, on prospect is yeah. especially because of his knockout. The knockouts, power, fourteen and zero yeah. with fourteen knockouts. Yeah. yeah, and he's got some of that Mexican style, that El Flaco Mexican <laughs> style from uh, Abel Sanchez. Yeah. And he has his uh, interpreter 
imported. Directly from Kazakhstan, yeah. <laughs> the mad dad translator. Samir came in, uh, he's gonna help translating uh, tonight with the fight, and uh, yeah, it, it'll be a fun show. Anyone that hasn't been to the Avalon, we have the, the dance floor right, I mean, we have the ring right on the dance floor, and then uh, everyone is like right on top of the action, it's great. And then the fighters, you appreciate this, right, Brian? The fighters, after, the, after they fight, they're in the crowd, Signing yeah. autographs, taking photos yeah. with the fans, where normally if you go to a big arena show, you never have that personal contact with and, the fighters. And I can personally uh, attest to this because fighting at the Avalon, it's you know super intimate setting. And when I fought back at home at a club show, it was almost <laughs> like the same setting where it was very intimate and I had a lot of people come out. And they actually said, we really enjoyed um, being so close to, to the action know right after you you're coming to us and talking to us so people people love that man and and i think i think that's what's great about fighting at a show like like tonight like on the avalon and that venue is uh for a club show it's just you know, it's unbelievable it's electric the yeah, fans it, love it uh, it's silly, right? yeah with doug's not here are we still going to try the questions or are we going to wait for uh, you know next week? i pass on the questions because <laughs> i don't want to make it look bad i, I, I appreciate and, but, that <laughs> but hey can you believe some of the, i mean doug God, i can't remember the ones he got last week but it's crazy i i, I don't know how he can yeah, um, you know, he's got a he's a genius when it comes to memory and uh, i think it's a photographic memory where if he reads a ring record and then remember, he knows yeah. the opponents, he knows the dates, he knows the locations, and uh, just you know him watching the fights. He's yeah, got a great, he, great memory. He's good at what he does. He's yeah, really he's good at it. He, he has experience. He too, has all, but he has all the side yeah. stories. Yeah. And he's been in all yeah. these fights now. You know, sure. now he's the old timer. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Him and Steve Kim are the old guys. You yeah. know, I remember where they couldn't even get when uh, Doug and Steve started. You know. They, Call for credentials to try to get in. They laughed at him, oh, man. you know. And then finally, they'd give him a ticket, you know, way up there. And now they're the guys. They're the guys, yeah. 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 Tom, uh, people are asking, who did you punch? But, uh, oh, I had a little uh, minor surgery. It's getting better. It's about a week, uh, week ago. So, uh, but it's it's getting a lot better. I can use my hand again now. I get the feeling in the fingers, but it's uh, it's healing fast. So no. No boxing for me. I'll leave that to the professionals like uh, Brian over here. I appreciate you you mentioning that, that you didn't hit me with it. So, <laughs> so once again, um, the stream will be on the 360 Promotions Facebook and YouTube channel and on Box Nation uh, over in the UK. Fans and the, the English uh, fans, are, they're uh, fanatic. We took a Triple G over there to fight uh, Kel Brook after... We had to go through the whole story after uh, Chris Eubanks Jr. and Billy Joe Sanders turned down the fight. Uh, Kel Brook stepped up and uh, he fought over there in, in England, fought at the, at the U2. You see how difficult it is to actually go on the road. You see what happened to Anthony Joshua. First time over here in America, first time at Madison Square Garden, and a uh, huge favorite over uh, Andy Ruiz. And then, so let me uh, ask you about that fight. Okay. Who do you like in the rematch? We were there live with the Triple G watching Yeah, that you fight. were there. Yeah. Who do you like in the rematch? Well, I'll tell you, Andy, Andy Ruiz has so much confidence now. <laughs> Um, you know, Anthony Joshua is still going to be the, the, the clear favorite, and if he keeps his focus, I mean, he had him knocked down, but I think when he had him knocked down, he lost his focus, was getting aggressive, and then he, I think he was surprised when Andy Ruiz got up and then knocked him down, and it seemed like AJ didn't recover from that. That one punch. Yeah, knockout, yeah, like yeah, on the, he on just, the temple, You know, yeah. he just sort of, uh, on the side of the head. he forgot where he, Joshua, you know, he learned from that, though. Guarantee he doesn't do that again. Well, what do you think Vladimir Klitschko is thinking no. now with Andy Ruiz being the <laughs> having all of his old titles? Yeah. He's like, you know, but uh, Vlad maybe, maybe Vladimir stays come back. in shape too. Yeah, yeah Vladimir's very dedicated, always stays in shape. And uh, I know a lot of people want to see him come back. A lot of people ask me, when is he coming back? But you know, every time I talk about him, he's he's happy doing what he's doing. And uh, what's he doing? He's in, he's in Kiev. He has a, a great hotel over there, and uh, he's invested his money wisely. Uh, in different projects, different real estate uh, yeah, uh, projects. So, you know, Vladimir was also very uh, high IQ for a boxer. He won a gold medal in the Olympics, 1996 90, Olympics, when uh, Ali lit the, the uh, torch for the Atlanta Games. And uh, then he had one of the longest uh, reigns as a heavyweight champion in, the, in history. So, Vladimir not only was smart in the ring, but uh, smart outside the and ring. And he had been knocked out three times. 
Oh, uh, that's right. He's been stuffed three times. So, yeah. I mean, that he came back. And that historic that. run was after yeah. after those losses. Right. So, uh, you know, Manuel Stewart, you got to give him a lot of credit. That's on a Samir shirt. The able always uh, yeah. uh, homage pays homage to Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, but Emmanuel pretty much like rebuilt his career, and then uh, he went on that long. Uh, he took a very dangerous fight. Remember Sam Peter in yeah. Atlantic City? Yeah. Took a very dangerous fight. He won that fight, and ever since then, he didn't uh, he didn't look back. Well, what happened was he used to run out, run out of gas in about the fifth or sixth round. You know, he so would start. Uh, that's what happened with uh, Layman Brewster. He started strong. Yeah. There, you know, there's yeah. some controversy around that fight, but uh, uh, but after that, uh, what, he, what controversy? Well, <laughs> no, seriously. I don't no, know as far it. as you know, it, it, you know, Vladimir had felt there was something that wasn't natural there because he oh. was dominating, and then he just like his energy oh. like went down. And oh, then as really? soon as they took him to the hospital, and then all of a sudden he was fine. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, was... well, you know, uh, the only guy who picked uh, the winner of that fight was uh, Dougie. Doug. Well, because that was an emotional story because uh, Bill Slayton had just passed away, and yeah. Lam uh, Lamont Brewster is a great guy, also very very smart guy, plays yeah. chess, yeah. and a very likable guy. Uh, I was I was friendly with uh, with uh, Lehman, and, and uh, it was a huge victory for him. But uh, Vladimir then got the rematch uh, a couple years later and, yeah, uh, and wound up uh, wound up beating him. Yeah. Was, so being so a heavyweight champion for over 10 years is not anything. Not you see what happened with AJ. We thought AJ would be on a similar run because he was so yeah. dominant and great physical specimen. But uh, you lose your focus for one. No, but he, uh, moment AJ can, can still do quick. it. Oh, he can still do it. Absolutely. He, he, he can still do he it. And I, I tell you what, yeah. that uh, that Ruiz uh, AJ fight was the best thing that could happen to boxing. And the best thing for the zone. Can you imagine the this? The heavyweight rematch? division really shook everything up for the yeah. heavyweight division. Yeah. No, it's really, and it's and the zone got a lot of publicity on, uh, and for, the, for that can fight. Can you imagine how many people are going to sign up <laughs> when they for have the, the rematch? Yeah, yeah. The rematch. Yeah. <laughs> people, people are going to be... Which I know Eddie's working on the rematch. I guess there's a little discrepancy <laughs> where that rematch is supposed to take place, but you know, hopefully they can put that together. You know, and, uh, yeah, they have two different locations yeah. and two different dates right now. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're working on yeah. Yeah, whatever they can... Eddie Hearn's a great interview. So do yep. we have any any sort of predictions where the fight will take place? MSG, well, England. I, I don't think it's... I want it to happen in New York, but I don't think it's going to. Uh, we'll see what happens. That's the that's part. You sign rematch clauses, but then there's always a negotiation as to you yeah. know, where everything uh, happens. So we'll see. Coach, but I know boxing, a lot of people will be tuned in for that, for that uh, rematch. Boxing Guru is asking, why don't you have a shirt with the boxer brand um, on today? Well, I'm working on a, a deal. And, We're uh, negotiating yeah. a, a, a high deal right now, so he's yeah. he's wearing his blank shirt right now until we get the, the right number. there tonight. Kevin will be commentating with uh, Doug Fisher and with yeah. uh, Cynthia Conte hosting. So I think we should wrap yeah, up now. We, will. we carried the show without our uh, without the brains <laughs> of the operation, uh, without Doug Fisher, the anchor. But we, we miss had, you, Dougie. Uh, Brian Ceballo, who's got one of the highest uh, ring IQs in the sport right now. So yeah, we have we'll Samir see you guys tonight. And we have me. Samir will be there tonight. <laughs> Dave will be there tonight. Doug Fisher, Kevin Kelly, Cynthia Conte, Brian Nashville will be there. And uh, we look forward to uh, some great fights tonight. Well, we look forward to seeing you tonight. All right? Awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, what do we have to say? Like, are we still okay. on? Are we still, okay, we'll still on. I was about to turn up. Drive okay. like you just won the lottery. Right, uh, when you're driving me. to the Avalon, right? <laughs> Through all those streets in, in the And Hollywood. when you're driving away from the Avalon after you have the 10 beers, the, get into the, an Uber. Tecate, sponsored by Tecate. <laughs> yeah, make sure you, yeah, no, make sure you get in the thing. Uber or let somebody else drive. No, the driving thing is so important. I know it's like a broken record here, but uh, you really have to drive cautiously. You gotta keep your eyes in a row, keep a lot of distance, let everybody go first, take the high road, and, uh, and you'll just take prevent a lot of accidents that way. Let, let someone get in that, that needs to cut in front of you. Yeah, and just then, let them in. And they're in a good mood. You're you're in a good mood because they're waving at you, and then it just makes a big difference than the people that try to always uh, crowd up uh, against someone. You, you know, the thing about the driving, you have to have it on, con on a conscious level because I've seen people who are really like mellow people and all easy going. They get in a car and they're yeah, exactly. maniacs. So <laughs> if you got... <laughs> Anyway. Like the mad translator. <laughs> oh wait, very, that's very you. emotional. That's you. <laughs> no, I drank. No, when he translates, I'm saying. Oh, when he gets emotional. You know. Anyway, yeah. just have, have a great week. Be happy. Love everybody. Love everything. 
And we'll see you tonight at either on TV or in person at the Avalon. The doors open at three o'clock at the uh, at the Avalon Hollywood Hollywood Invite. All righty. Adios. Adios.